So welcome to today's episode of Character Critiques, where today I'm going to be criticising the Greaser leader, Johnny Vincent from Bully. Now Johnny isn't seen at all in the game until chapter 3. Well, okay, slight lie, he is seen in the click introduction scene, and he also attends Russell Northrop's boss fight, but he doesn't interact with Jimmy until chapter 3. At the beginning of the chapter, Jimmy and Pete are playing darts when Peanut, one of Johnny's friends, says Johnny needs Jimmy's help, to which Jimmy doesn't really care first of all, but quickly changes his mind when Pete mentions the Greasers could help Jimmy get to Gary. Now when Jimmy travels to New Coventry, we meet Johnny for the very first time, and we learn an awful lot about Johnny in this minute long cutscene. Within the first 20 seconds, we learn Johnny is incredibly paranoid, accusing Jimmy of laughing at him behind his back and Johnny becomes increasingly angry before quickly coming to his senses and revealing the reason why he's so angry, because of his girlfriend Lola cheating on him. Now, we actually got a very subtle hint towards the storyline in Chapter 2, in the mission Movie Tickets, where Gordon and Lola are waiting in line at the movies. It's not uncommon for Rockstar to add in foreshadows and hints in their games, though this hint wasn't so subtle when you look back on it. Now this scene is a great introduction to Johnny in my opinion, as it shows Johnny isn't like the other people we've met in the game so far, and he could be a very dangerous character. Everyone else Jimmy has met so far hasn't been as violent or as paranoid as Johnny is. Russell only attacked Jimmy in the introduction because Jimmy beat up his friend Wade, the preps only attacked Jimmy because of Gary's room spreading, but Johnny just flat out accuses Jimmy and puts hands on him in the first scene we meet him. After Jimmy gets the photos for Johnny, we see Johnny is understandably irritated, once again getting angry at Jimmy just for talking, and then plotting his revenge on Gord, which is to round up his friends and beat Gord up, which does succeed. After Gord's beating, Johnny has two reactions, a cheerful reaction and a slightly more angry reaction. Now in my opinion, this is another great mission to showcase how dangerous Johnny is. Unlike other clicks which usually deal with people in a one-on-one -on -one scenario, Johnny just outright sets Gord up for a beating in an abandoned park in Greaser territory where none of Gord's preppy friends can really help him. Okay, Gord was with Tad and Parker, but they also got beaten up. Either way, Gord and the two preps being beaten up in this abandoned park, then being left there as Johnny, Jimmy and the Greasers leave, is a definite sign that Johnny is someone you don't want to get on the bad side of. Later on, at the library, Jimmy is called over by Ernest, who says Johnny has gotten that paranoid over Lola he's accused Algernon of all people of going with her. So Ernest asks Jimmy to find Cornelius and Algernon, but when we find Cornelius, we spot a gang of greasers outside the boys' dorm harassing him, but we also see a special somebody with the greasers, Gary Smith, who is more than likely responsible for Johnny and the greasers harassing the nerds. Now, as we all know, Gary is a manipulative troublemaker, as we learned from the events of Chapter 1 and Chapter 2, and it wouldn't come as a surprise if sometime between the mission bait and tagging, Gary met up with Johnny and started spreading rumours about Algernon going with Lola. It makes sense for someone as mentally unstable as Johnny to believe it about checking up the facts first, and it also works well in Gary's favour of creating chaos and causing suffering in innocent people, and Johnny certainly doesn't hold back when someone gets on his bad side. After Cornelius spills the beans about Algie being at the pizza parlour, we see Johnny actually being a leader. He instructs Norton and Vance to beat Cornelius up and instructs the other greasers to find Algie and to bring him to the clubhouse, which I'll assume is either Blue Pools Hall or the Tenements. After saving Cornelius from the Greasers' beating, Cornelius reveals Algernon isn't at the pizza parlour, which is what he told Johnny, but instead, well, he doesn't actually tell Jimmy where Algernon is, but somehow Jimmy already knows. That's... I don't know. Anyway, when Jimmy does find Algernon, Chad is also there for some unexplained reason. Now, what I don't get about this part is how it's never brought up again, like Johnny seems to be strongly fixated on Gord throughout the majority of the chapter. He never mentions Algernon or Chad, despite the fact he wanted Algernon in this mission. I can't help but think maybe Johnny was either too fixated on Gord, or maybe he didn't have any actual proof of Algernon being with Lola. After all, when the Greasers do find Algernon, Lola is nowhere to be seen, and maybe Johnny just lets it slide, which I highly doubt considering how violent and paranoid he is. We next see Johnny and Lola having a small argument at Lola's house, which is in the middle of the street, before Jimmy arrives. Now, in this mission, Johnny has a bit of a hostile attitude towards Jimmy, probably because of Jimmy's tag he left on the underpass, or because the Greasers most likely saw Jimmy helping out Chad and Algernon escape when Johnny Vincent wanted Algie, or maybe because he's pissed off at Lola, which, if Johnny does have anger issues, which is likely, means he would be a bit snarky to Jimmy even though he didn't do anything. Lola then starts complimenting both Jimmy and Johnny before Johnny takes a bit of offence at Lola saying Jimmy was fast, which in turn sort of sets up the race between the two of them and for some reason, Lucky and Ricky as well, even though they weren't nowhere to be seen. 
When Lola compliments Jimmy on being fast, it could actually be a slight reference to the mission Race the Veil, where Lola was actually there attending the race and cheering on Gord, probably. Personally, I think in this mission, we see that Johnny has to constantly prove himself to be the king, and being the best at everything, probably to impress Lola and to keep up a good image of himself being a leader. After all, it doesn't look good if your girlfriend compliments you on being a good racer, and then you go and lose to some kid who has no interest in bikes at all. Now this part isn't a critique about Johnny, but the storyline in general. We don't see Lola and Jimmy meeting before, and Johnny says that Jimmy is at Lola's house, but they're in the middle of the road. So unless Lola is homeless, I feel this part was rushed a little bit. Now as for Lola and Jimmy meeting up, they actually did, in the mission that was cut from the game, which began with Jimmy looking for Johnny right after the mission bait. But since that's got nothing to do with the storyline, I'm going to skip that. I feel the ending to the mission was a bit skewed for Johnny's point of view, as Johnny is that paranoid, I'm surprised he didn't just outright attack Jimmy during the kissing scene, especially since he was literally down the road. Or maybe he did actually see Jimmy and Lola kissing, since in the next mission, Lola says she's been kicked out of the tenements by the other greasers. Or maybe the other greasers saw it and just told Johnny anyway. I'd assume at this point, off screen, Johnny hates Jimmy now, and so do the rest of the greasers, which would explain why they're so hostile to Jimmy, despite the fact Jimmy hasn't actually done anything to the greasers. Sometime after this mission, Lola manages to get the preps and the greasers to have one massive fight, so Jimmy goes to look for Johnny the only way he knows how, to beat the shit out of his friends. I believe the confrontation scene between Jimmy and Johnny was one of the more dramatic moments of the game, and it actually had a good build up to it. This is more of a critique than it is about Johnny, but I find Jimmy didn't do himself any favours in this scene, like he literally beat up Johnny's friends, then he has the audacity to say calm down, we can be friends, like it's not difficult to see why Johnny is so pissed off here. Jimmy, a guy Johnny thought he could trust, literally steals his girlfriend, beats up his friends multiple times, and then puts his hands up and says, we can be friends. It's not exactly hard to see why Johnny's angry at this point. The fight between the two of them is quickly split up by the police, but somehow Johnny managed to set Jimmy up for a beating in the junkyard, in a very similar fashion to how Gord was set up. Johnny provokes Jimmy into chasing him, Jimmy gets lured to a location where no one can help him, and then he gets beaten half to death. Although, as we know, Jimmy actually beats Johnny up, not Johnny and Grease to beat Jimmy up. Although I like the fight, I feel like there's a lot of explanations to be made here. Like one, why is Peter here? Peter did absolutely nothing in this chapter except for playing darts. Norton's been arrested twice in this mission and yet Norton still somehow ends up in the junkyard. Side note, in the rumble, Jimmy chases Peanut to find out where Johnny is, but when he gets there he fights Vance, Lefty and Peanut. But in the scene where Johnny confronts Jimmy, the three people Jimmy fought were Hal, Ricky and Peanut. So I believe the fight may have been rushed quite a bit. After all, there's no actual way that Johnny could have set Jimmy up in the middle of a fight between the greasers and the preps like that, if you know what I mean. After Jimmy beats Johnny up, it seems the only reason Johnny wanted to fight Jimmy was over Lola, but seems very shocked when Jimmy reveals the reason why he fought Johnny was just to prove he's stronger than him. This could prove that lengths Johnny will go for Lola, and how he greatly misunderstood the whole scenario. Like maybe in Lola's race, Johnny thought the race was actually for Lola, not just a generic race, which might explain why Lola was kicked out of the tenements in the next mission. Now after this fight, Johnny isn't seen at all until the intro to Chapter 5, where he's now on good terms with Darby Harrington, his sworn enemy. But in the first mission of Chapter 5, Johnny is the only click leader who isn't seen at all in this scene. Now this could actually be a good hint to a future mission in the chapter, Finding Johnny Vincent, where it's revealed Johnny Vincent has gone missing. Now this is actually a good sort of hint, since it seems nobody who's played fully has realised Johnny's absence in this scene could imply the town he's got him incarcerated at Happy Vaults shortly after the intro scene to Chapter 5. Now Johnny's storyline comes to an end in the mission Finding Johnny Vincent, where we learn that some point between Chapter 4 and Chapter 5 we're told Johnny and Lola have broken up, and it's the reason Johnny ended up in the asylum. However, this might not be the case at all, as Johnny did seem to be really happy in the introduction to Chapter 5. In the mission, Johnny mentions he was only put there because of some of the townies were gloating about game with Lola, which, much like the mission Wrong Part Town, might have been Gary's doing. So once again, Gary may have taken advantage of Johnny's paranoid and violent nature. I do like how we're never given the reason why Johnny was put into a mental institution. It gives some room to imagine what he actually did to deserve that. Now, the last time we ever meet Johnny again is in Complete Mayhem, where he seems to be the only leader who outright blames Jimmy for the hell that's going on at Bullworth. Darby just wanted to fight. Ernest was manipulated by Gary, and Ted didn't care because Jimmy's a nobody now. The words Johnny uses in the mission are quite interesting too. You left us. You left us, which could mean Johnny saw Jimmy as a greaser, which makes sense in a way since chapter 3 is the only chapter in the game where Jimmy befriends a click before they fall out. Although Johnny's attitude towards Jimmy when he was on good terms with the greasers wasn't exactly the friendliest. Now after this we don't see Johnny Vincent again. 
aside from the end credits where he's cheering Jimmy on. Now overall, I believe Johnny Vincent is an excellent example of a character done right. He's not forced into the story because the plot demands it or because of filler. What I also liked was the unique spin the Greasers had on the story. As I mentioned, they're the only click in the game Jimmy actually befriends before getting on their bad side, unlike most of the chapters in the game where Jimmy just sort of rivals with them. I guess you could also count this with the nerds, Jimmy built their respect up over the course of the story as opposed to befriending them at the beginning of a chapter, before losing it all in Stronghold Assault. Now Johnny's story is one of the more realistic stories in Bully, like I'm sure everyone knows or remembers a time in school where everyone knew about somebody's relationship troubles because of cheating which ended up in fights or something, or even saw something like it on TV like on Jeremy Kyle or Jerry Springer or something like that. Now, as I mentioned, I like how his story spanned the majority of the game, but didn't take up much of it outside the main chapter. It's a nice touch if you value a story and the little details about it. So that's it for today's video, I hope you enjoyed this critique, and yeah, have a nice day.